Several points. First, the variety of opinion in the room was fascinating, a very broad range of opinions and uh, in, a, in a short amount of time to deal with it. And so I, I appreciated, and I think uh, everyone appreciated, the variety of opinion and the respectful way in which those opinions were shared. The, our group too felt, uh, but we didn't come in and have someone tinker the model for us, that, uh, <clears throat> that, that before you can credibly go to revenue generating options, you have to be sure that the government is operating lean and mean and that we want to be assured that government is operating as cost efficiently as we can. And so that was an underlying theme that I think that there was consensus on in the room. <clears throat> the, the other issue that came up was the amount of distrust that exists between different uh, stakeholders in the process and the need to get information, to, to have policy-driven decisions based on accurate information. There was a couple times when it came up that <clears throat> the lack of information uh, and, and how that information could be better filled. If you're gonna be making these kinds of major policy decisions, we, we feel, I think we felt that there should, be a, there should be a tremendous effort to provide specific and helpful information into the, into the policy consequences. <clears throat> With regard to, we, we sort of discussed this in, in three categories, the permanent fund, the oil industry, and new taxes on others, and felt that, <clears throat> I mean, my sense was is that, that, that everyone has, uh, has, uh, has, has to contribute for us to move forward. Uh, specifically, uh, we had 16 people in, in our discussion group, the vote was 14 to zero for an income tax, uh, which kind of surprised me, but that was the vote. And I think some of the logic behind that vote is, is it's time for Alaskans to have some skin in the game. Now, I'm not defending that, <coughs> uh, but, uh, but, but that was 14, 14 positive votes and no, no votes. They would make Alaskans have some skin in the game with regard to the size of their government. And what we uh, put in there was, uh, was one of the toggles in the model, which would put it at 15% uh, at, uh, of the federal tax liability amount is the amount that we thought was the appropriate amount. The, uh, <clears throat> the second uh, most popular uh, vote was a seven for and two against. Uh, the only one of these revenue sources that there was votes against was on the permanent fund earnings. And we looked at the permanent fund earnings and we thought that, <clears throat> that, that I think as a group that they needed to contribute to the process. We didn't go with the endowment method. We used a 50-50 split and we raised about $1.4 billion in that process and about $600 million in, uh, through the income tax. And what we did as a process <clears throat> is we went through, based on the number of green dots at each potential revenue source, and we went through and we toggled the model and discussed each one in turn. So <clears throat> that was one and two. There was uh, two that uh, were five. One was the North Slope reimbursable credits that people felt should be reduced, and that was a 5-0 vote. And the other was the base rate for uh, taxes. <clears throat> the base rate for taxes, uh, currently it's 35% of profit, and we talked about 40 and 45%. <clears throat> we ultimately ended up at, uh, for, uh, at an increase to uh, 45%. And we ultimately ended up with about 2.7 or 2.8 billion dollars in additional revenue. We were 250 million dollars short, and we thought that with 10 billion dollars in savings, a 250 million dollar shortfall gave us a soft landing through the issue. We went uh, past those four into uh, into mining taxes was three to zero, oh, and uh, and uh, uh, people felt that uh, that other industries should be. Uh, paying uh, more closer to their fair share. There was some sense that the oil industry, we've been heavily reliant on the oil industry and some of these un uh, other industries may not have been, uh, may, may not have been paying uh, a share. <clears throat> we went down to the 2 and 0 revenue sources as well, which were the sin taxes and motor fuel taxes. And so we went uh, literally through every revenue source, toggled every toggle we could, and we ended up with about, uh, with, like I said, 2.7 billion in new revenue, about 250 million short. We started to go back in to try and get our model to go green on us, but we decided that $250 million short was a good compromise for us. It was a, it was, it was a, it was a fascinating process to go through. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity to go through it. 
and uh, uh, and uh, and I look forward to the conversation to come.